been here before, welcome back. If you haven't, you have much to catch up on. Nearly five years ago, we sold our goat farm in Victoria to hit the road in a truck and caravan. After four years of exploring Australia, we have changed course a little, selling our caravan and buying a 48 foot yacht. Exploring overland is still a priority in our truck, but now we are adding the sea to our adventures. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we don't know how to sail. If you haven't worked out what I'm doing already, I'm replacing our front bollard or Samson post. It was just bolted onto the deck, which was three mil thick, without a backing plate. I'll show you under here. So it had no backing plate or anything here, and it was just bolted to this three mil deck. It is reasonably strong because it is not a big distance, but nowhere near strong enough. So. I'm going to get rid of that, or I have got rid of it. We're going to weld a plate into the top, like this diagram, hopefully. We're going to have a 25 millimeter thick plate here, so it takes up the depth of the timber. Otherwise, we'll get water pooling in there and weld in a new 6 mil thick by 75 diameter stainless post that's braced on the bottom onto this super big angle iron that's in here onto that angle line there if we put a brace along the bottom like this butt weld it to the bottom down here weld all the way around the edges weld there and it's going to have two cross paths in it and it should be strong you shouldn't be able to rip that off the front of the boat without some serious thing so that if we need to get towed for some reason or we run aground and it is a much more convenient spot for us to put our mooring ropes on because they'll be up here nice and high nice and strong and also both of our anchors and snubber lines so that's the plan hopefully we can get it done shortly after Christmas we've spoke to the boiler makers the welders and they'll be back first of Jan so we'll get onto it then and get it done so really that is the last thing that we need to do plus some location blocks in the anchors to hold them in place and that's it we're pretty much done for the major things we need to do before we get out and go sailing please let's go sailing need to learn how to do that we're keen so that's what we're looking at doing all out of stainless Well, this is my first attempt ever at splicing three strand nylon. So I've got no idea what I'm doing, except I looked up a few YouTube videos, of course, and did the best from that. And let me know what you think at the end, whether it's acceptable 
or whether I should go back to school and study up a bit more and do a bit more YouTubing before the next one. Let me know. I found the hardest part was getting the splice started the first few that you do after you form your loop. I couldn't quite work out which ones to go in, but I sort of nutted it out, I think, and hopefully I got it right. Uh-oh, I've forgotten where I'm up to. just heading out to find turtles which is uh, amazing we've had someone contact us and say they're out now come along we arrived at the beach just as this turtle was making her way onto the dune the Wungara Coast turtle volunteers advised Carl and I that we must not talk make crazy moves or have a torch on until they say they explain that as soon as she has finished digging her hole, she'll begin to lay. And once about 10 eggs are laid, you can then talk and use torches as she goes into some weird kind of trance. At first, I didn't really believe them, but it was amazing to see. She was so busy laying with such focus that the volunteers were able to measure her, find tags of identification and mess with her flippers. I just laid on the sand right behind her watching every single egg pop out. The work these guys do is amazing. They have raffles to raise money to create nesting cages. They've petitioned the council and had street lights dimmed. And they've got signs for during turtle time that people need to use their low beam only. When the turtle finishes laying and heads back into the water, the next job begins for the volunteers. They have to dig up all the hard work that turtle's just done, collect all the eggs, and then move them over into their nesting cages. They do this to stop predators and humans from disturbing the nests. The Wungara coastline has the largest concentration of marine turtles nesting on the east coast of Australia. So if you'd like to donate, I'll put a link in the description below. If you like our content and think we're okay, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing helps us and commenting helps us even more within YouTube. So if you want us to continue, please subscribe. Last day of 2023 and I've got a little job today. I'm just going to redrain any water out of our fuel tanks. I've done it before, you've seen that probably. Um, only thing different this time is hopefully I'll get very little water. We have filled up with fuel again and I've got lights in the engine room So I don't need to do it by torch, which is really good. So I've got me hose containers Shifter to undo the bun. They've got taps on them. So I will go down and do that now uh, Wrong plug best wife ever yeah. I made a mistake I didn't since I didn't leave it all sorted out together can you get me a fitting from the fitting the fitting container selection where's that under the starboard side rebirth bunk yep. the right back at the at the rear end yeah. there'll be that big hose clamp thing that i bought and right next to it in the on the top in a little box will be all my fittings in a cardboard box yeah. i like one of these yeah but that's that big okay see that yeah yeah and it's probably going to be a stainless fitting okay there's those two and 
it just needs to go into the barb needs to go into that if you get me drift thanks probably the one that I really used and me plug thank you fuel was pretty good except we do have a tiniest bit of water in the bottom there look at that but much better when it was last time because I got what, probably 25 litres of water yeah so so that's much better all good we have just been hit with the most horrendous storm my gosh and one of the boats, the Lady Musgrave, has actually come undone from her mooring and they're just trying to get her back. So thankfully the wind was okay and didn't send it too far around, otherwise it may have hit other boats and things, but yeah, the guys are on board now trying to sort her out and Carl's down there helping them, checking other people's ropes on their boats as well. And it's crazy. We were uh, we were actually up in our caravan. We had somebody interested in buying it, and um, so we were in there. And then the storm hit. It was just frantic. Uh, and the lady said to me, she said, "Oh, look, that boat's." going or something or other and and then I was like hang on that boat wasn't wasn't anywhere it's supposed to be tied up ah so yeah it's just been nuts and um yeah thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you want a reminder hit the bell and remember we always love a thumbs up <laughs>